Hello, and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? We have something from Italy. Fragile. It must be Italian. Just kidding. This massive box comes to us all the way from Salt Lake City, just next door over in Utah. And it's from Mr. David. Now, long story short, I got a note, and I have been able to become the custodian of what's in this box. Now a lot of you are like, aren't you like an Amiga hoarder? I'm a custodian. So whenever there's an opportunity to acquire things, I almost bought eight Amiga 2000s today, glad I didn't, I jump at the chance. And Mr. David had a bunch of stuff, be its custodian, how about that? So he writes me a nice short novel I'm going to read some of. It says, Dear Dr. Chris, thank you for the entertainment and all that you do in preserving, restoring, and repairing these amazing Amiga computers. I hope that these bits, pieces, and orphan parts find a good home in your Amigas or in need of TLC. So this, this started out as a acquisition of a CyberVision 64 and just it kind of snowballed from there, okay? I'm just sharing this with you because I have a love for the technology the machine, and the name of the Commodore Amiga. That's right! He ain't lying! So basically, it is so much stuff. So much stuff. There is a great story behind how he got these and just... Okay, so I'm not going to read you the inventory because I just want to share it with you. We're just going to we're going to open this pickle and... Yeah. Alright, so I put the box on the squeaky chair. And we're just going to... We're just going to dive into it. Because... Yeah. For a long time, I have been... Building a Zip 500 to test chips in. When I was able to become the custodian of this. This is a backbit chip tester. That's right. Booyah! Now I can test up to 40 dip, 44 dip socket. A lot of Commodore support in these, uh, mainly for the 8-bit, but it does do a lot of the dip ECS OCS Amiga chips, which is incredible. First off, I want to say, David, thank you for allowing me to be the custodian of these things and hooking a brother up with a really good deal. Next, now these are in no particular order. It's a flip box from Retro Rewind. That's the little networking thing. Maybe these things can help other Amigas, I guess. I, we'll see how things work out. Next is what I have been wanting for a while. and It's the Zulu SCSI external model. That's going to come in extremely handy with testing external SCSI because it doesn't require any power. It's micro SD. It's a Zulu, but it's micro and it's external. Incredible. Right there. It goes right to the side. Now, a couple uh, 3D printed back plates for Zulu SCSIs. Probably front plates, actually, for like a 2000 or something. Got three of those, actually. The other one, oh, here it is, fell. Next are two chips for Amigas. They are Super Buster 11s and they are for two other things that I have acquired here. Right here. Now you know I have a quick pack in my 4000 tower and the 3000 tower has a 3640 or is it a warp engine or a GVP? I forget. Get two more of the BFG 9060s these are um, built by Kavanaugh's, if you don't know who Kavanaugh's is. Go check out my video on the BFG for the Amiga 3 and 4000 series machines. Those, along with these, Super Buster 11s, well, the Super Buster 11s are for something else. Remember, custodian, custodian, okay? This is an adapter to use a external GoTech with. So if you have a GoTech loose, you can just floppy cable it right in to the Amiga. Now, I have an external GoTech, but 
I have another case that uh, Mr. Plants and Amiga Jack gave me. I'm going to try and put one in there and use that cable for that. Which leads me to the BFGs again. Um, you know, when you put a 060 on there, you're going to need a heat sink. So these are micro slim fans, uh, 60 millimeter, I believe. With There's two fans for the BFGs. Billy like Chris, what about uh, processors for the BFGs? Don't sweat it. Got two of those right here, 60 to 60s. They're LCs, no FPU, but they do have MMU with heat sinks that these fans will go on. Now you're thinking, okay, that's great. You get the BFG thing sorted out for your towers now. You're going to be doing that. Um, what about the 3640? Well, it's right here. 3640. This will be for the bench board. It's actually going to be to fix the Black Beast, I hope. What about storage, Chris? Aren't you going to need some some Zulu scuzzies? Yes, I will. I got the mini. Three more. You know? And the whole thing started for this. This is the video card. Let me show you this beautiful specimen here. It does have the D sub 15 to D sub 15 pass through. Oh. All right, here you go. Phase five, CyberVision 64, two mega. We got the spots for the extra RAM chips. I'll have to source. And fine, this is a very John Holmes card. I mean, it's 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 really long. But that's what this whole procurement, I'll say, has started out with this card. And that is going to go in one of the towers also. Well, the 3000 tower. Which leads me to another 3000 daughter board. Because you can never have too many... 3,000 daughter boards when you're repairing people's 3,000s, right? You know, while you're down that road, you might as well consider networking. So this is a Hydra. It's a thin net. 10 base T. Uh, a or A, is that AUI? I don't know. But it's a full-sized Amiga from Hydra System. Uh, Amiga, yeah. Amiga network card from Hydra Systems. They're about 800K to a meg. Nothing to shake a stick at, but... Bad networking is better than no networking, I'll tell you that much. When you're rocking repairing machines and you're always putting FPUs in people's machines, you need more FPUs, right? 11, 882s or 881s? 881s at 25. Now normally you're like 882s, but 881s are fine too, and FPU is an FPU. Um, which leads me to more storage. This is called an SD box, it's from amigastore.eu. It is a parallel port or serial port uh, adapter with a little Pi Nano in there and you get an SD card, you plug it in and you get like SD card storage. It has a little manual in it that I'll have to read and installation guide and ouch, I just cut myself on that. As you know, I do repairs and I'm always looking out for vidiots because I'm ripping through them. So four more vidiot clones. These are the uh, resistor networks. They're just the boards, okay? I gotta put the pins on them. But there's four snap-out boards for vidiots. We'll put the L bracket hangers in there so they can be used. But all the bird seed has been done. Bird seed means all the little resistors and micro ceramics and doohiculars and science have been taken care of. The next thing is a gender changer because it's 2023 and everybody seems to be doing that. So why not convert SCSI DB uh, SCSI DB25 to a 50 pin ribbon cable, and then right r r yep again 50 pin SCSI to DB25. So you can make an external device an uh, an internal device an external device like a SCSI CD round. Plug this in. You can bench it. It's all for bench board work things like that to help you guys with repairs and testing devices and SCSIs and stuff like that. So you're going to see a lot of SCSI stuff today. Which leads me to monitoring your CPU temps. Uh, Cavanaugh sells these CPLD IC boards. They are a temperature monitor using the I2C protocol bus. I haven't covered that yet, but I'm going to when we get into the 3000 tower pimp out maneuver with all this stuff. 
So why not grab a couple of those when you're doing 060s, you want to monitor everything, you have the open slots in the tower, but you're going to need SCSI. Now, you saw earlier on in life, I did a 4091 uh, review in purple, and it was in the 3000 tower, but I took it out. It's just too beautiful for me, and I know I bugged Mr. Hooper and Stefan for years on that. It's mothballed in its case. I might put it in glass and just in case of emergency. What the hell did you just say? You need SCSI. So here's the 4091 with its Terminator in black. If you can have one, why not get two? For our next thing, this is not a proctology exam, this is for the white glove service. New keyboards for the 3000 tower and the 4000 tower. When I mean new keyboards, I mean top shelf stuff. Tower keyboards have a long cable here and a long cable here. As you can tell by the plastic wrap on the, the swirly part, she's new. This is new, 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 N-O-S, new. It's not in its pink bag, but she is new as they come. It's an Amiga Technologies keyboard, okay? Ha, he, ha. Part number KPRE 94YC from Amiga 3 Technologies. I don't even see that, but Amiga 3 Technologies, made in Malaysia. So you're thinking, if you got one, why not get two? I'm going to put this one down. So it's not trickery here. Here's the bag. Well, there was the bag. Same thing. NOS. Long. Long keyboard. New number two. Amiga Technologies. There's two of them. For real, look. Two of them. Two. NOS. Amiga 3000. 4,000 keyboards. These are the nicest specimens I have ever seen since 1995, 6, 7 when these were out. These are not used that I know of. They are as clean inside. Between the keys, there's nothing. Let's check the tubes. There's not a scratch on this thing. It has never been in there. The other cable, check them both. Yeah, they're new, new. They haven't been in anything. So, Mr. David, hope you're enjoying your Tesla. And I thank you very much. Um, so we're going to be covering those and these builds in the future. I just wanted to share the custodianship of new Amiga things. I like to share what you get, you know, let you know what's going on in the nut farm of this household. If you hear anything upstairs, that is my dinosaur dog running around hoping for food. So that is all I got for today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me for this unboxing Amiga haul of craziness. And special thank you to Mr. David for making this all possible. That is all I got for now. Stay tuned for this and more in future videos. Thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something. Uh. What are you know from funny, you bastard?